Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rob Champa. I'd like to welcome Marsh Sutherland here. Hey, buddy. CEO of Referral Bonus and Founder Matchup. And we're here today at Voltage Coffee. We've got a beautiful day in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Marsh and I chatted recently, and we talked a lot about various subjects, entrepreneurship and innovation here in, in Cambridge and what's going on. So we figured we'd get together and we'd share some of our conversation. <laughs> No, you're laughing. It was a good conversation. Was a good conversation. We cheer someone with the audience. So, yep. so I get some questions, Marsh, and, and you know, let's talk about, first of all, you're not from here, no. but now you're a Bostonian. What was your path? Um, well, I went to high school in Ferris High School in Spokane, Washington. All my first alums out there are very proud of what I'm doing out here, trying to help change the world. Uh, went to undergrad at PLU in Tacoma and went to Arizona State University where I got my MBA and my law degree. One thing that's consistently been in my past, which I now realize, is I'm definitely a change agent, a person who wants to take my own personal efforts and leadership and my connections to change the world. And I'm doing that through Founder Matchup Referral Bonus. I had another stuff called Social Grow a while ago. But yeah, I'm basically out to change the world. I see things that piss me off and I try to do my best to fix them. So let, let's talk a little bit about Referral Bonus and Founder Matchup and you, you mentioned you know, some things kind of piss you off to motivate you. Mm -hmm. So you're one of these guys who channels who channels energy. Definitely. So so why'd you start? Well, and tell us about them, by the way. Too. Sure, sure. I mean, with referral bonus, what we're doing is we're essentially destroying the entire hiring market worldwide. It's like a four hundred twenty billion dollar market. It's completely obsolete. You know, basically, job ads on Monster and Dice are simply no better than classified ads. There's no personal relationship there whatsoever. The recruiting agencies as well, they don't know the candidates that they're charged, that they're submitting to their clients. They, you know, they charge way too much money. I actually run Walden Recruiting as well. I'm trying to put myself out of business. I think it's obsolete. So referral bonus, what we're doing is we're essentially peer sourcing candidates from the people that have worked with them before. And we're going to hopefully be creating the world's largest charitable donation engine as well because people who refer candidates will also be able to choose to donate their referral reward if they want to donate to a charity of their choice. Excellent. And founder matchup. I'm very involved in the Boston startup community. I run the Boston Biz Spark Media Group from Microsoft. Um, I'm very well connected in the Boston area. As a recruiter, I know lots of people. And people are always coming to me saying, Marsh, do you know a CTO? Marsh, do you know a CEO or CMO? Marketing people, you know, it, it's, it's, it's difficult because I have so many requests coming through all the time. I said, you know what? I'm just gonna establish an organization to do it. Cool. And I went to Startup Weekend a couple times, and one thing on Friday nights that they do, is they have kind of a big pitch fest, and everybody goes up and spends a minute pitching their startup. They put on an overhead uh, spreadsheet. People get numbers. They go stand around the room, and they meet co-founders to do startup weekends. So, what we decided, we decided to replicate that model. We're free. We don't charge ninety-nine dollars a weekend. We do it for free, and we've had two or three startups come out of it. So Outstanding. It's working. So, what Marsh isn't saying, he and I both hang out at the Cambridge Innovation Center. Yes. Okay. So now that the Cambridge Innovation Center right around the corner here from right. Voltage. And we want to thank Lucy from Voltage for allowing us to, to do some shooting here. So, and a, and a call out to Tim Rowe, so hopefully Tim will you know, <laughs> like our video. But I was talking to Tim, he's like, Rob, there were over 400 companies in the Cambridge Innovation Center. Mm -hmm. And just a hotbed of activity. Everybody's walking around with ideas, there's meetings in the hallways, there's, there's free espresso there too to keep us all right. caffeinated. Espresso. Espresso always works. Yes. Now what you see, you're dealing with a lot of folks, you know, you're, you're putting folks here and there. So there's a need for innovation. So does the skill set for innovation change these days? What are you seeing? I mean, are you looking for innovative people or do some situations not really work for innovative people? What do you see out there? Well, in terms of the skill sets, it's often people that do pattern matching. Like if they can see a, you know, how things are done now, if they can learn about new technology that can make things better or completely disrupt it, that's one good skill set, the whole pattern matching, you know, seeing a better way of doing things. Um, other skills that you need to see is you need to see, you know, with entrepreneurship, you need someone who has drive, motivation, who will do whatever it takes to get stuff done. Technically, it's mostly Ruby on Rails for oh, development. Dev set. Yeah, iOS is important. HTML5 and CSS3 are the hot front-end technologies combined with JavaScript. And we're also seeing a real need for designers. We don't have enough designers here in the Boston area. But really, you know, it has to do with, you know, people having the drive to do something to change the world. Those are the, those are the subs that I believe in. So. Okay, so what about marketing guys like me? Is there, is there, no, is, is there no hope? 
search engine optimization. Obviously, social media marketing is a huge thing. And I see a real disconnect here in the Boston area between the social media marketing community and the startup community. And unfortunately, there's a lot of great startups out there, but no one in, in Boston, but no one really knows about them because they don't really tweet. They don't really do the Facebook like page. They really don't know how to get noticed. They don't do Hero, you know, help reporter.com mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for marketing. There's so many opportunities for them to do that, and they just don't do it. I mean, with Social Row, we actually built our Twitter following to over 47,000 people. Oh, wow. You know, and we didn't even launch a product. But we did that, but we also brand ourselves very well. We became experts. We're quoted in a bunch of different newspapers and magazines from the helperreporter.com. There's a ton of opportunities to, to for startups to brand themselves, become thought leaders in their particular expertise. So when they do launch, they already have a good following. When we actually launched Social Row back in February of 2010, we had 15,000 followers. We had over 9,000 hits to our website when nice. we announced the launch. Nice. So. Interesting. The, um, let's go back to the social aspect. And I have the opportunity to meet with just a ton of marketing people. Right. And I'm involved in the community here as well. And, and I'm seeing a shift. There seems to be folks that are, uh, from the marketing side, that are embracing social and embracing, uh, whether they like it or not, the technology aspect. Mm -hmm. And then there are folks that are kind of like in 1994 saying, you know what, I don't want to... I don't want to embrace this stuff, and I've done this for years. I'm seeing that split. Right. Uh, are you seeing it in your world as well? My world is pretty much, it, it depends on who the target audience is. If it's B2B, it tends to be the more old school marketing. Um, I was at a event a few weeks ago where they said that, like analyst reports are some of the best way to get B2B marketing. You know, for referral bonus, so we want to be featured in Gartner, Forrester, mm -hmm. things like that and be featured on different B2B you know, websites like ere.net, which mm -hmm. is where headhunters and recruiters go to. Uh, but for B2C, you definitely need to hit Twitter. You definitely need to be hitting um, you know, Facebook for sure. And there's a whole lot of opportunities on that. LinkedIn, I mean, there you can pay for advertising. You've got you know, Google AdWords. Depends on the startup, but there's different strategies to do that. I don't know that, I mean, I don't, I'm not a big believer in, in paid advertising anymore. When you have PR opportunities, you know, like, David Merriman Scott talks about news jacking. Mm -hmm. I mean, like with referral bonus, I want us to jump on the whole unemployment constant stream of, you know, what's the unemployment, how to find a job, jump on that. With referral bonus being an expert place to do it. Um, I like how HubSpot has demonstrated a lot of thought expertise in inbound marketing. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to do that with referral bonus where we become a knowledge center for both people looking for jobs and people that are looking to hire the best talent. So I, th I think that it's definitely the way to go. It's the cheapest way to go. It doesn't cost $100,000 anymore to launch a start. You can do it for much cheaper, you know, and see if it works or not. Oh, the, the tools, the tools are, the tools yeah, are absolutely. amazing. So speaking of startups, you don't consider yourself an entrepreneur. No, I don't. Okay, you said, oh, I've started this, <laughs> I've started this, I've started this, and what's it take to be an entrepreneur? You know, you're talking to somebody who's actually, you know, started a company right. as well, and it's like, right. and what's the, what's the line? I know, some people think I'm an asshole when I say this, but... I don't want to be a wannabe. I want to actually make money at my business. I want to make some revenue. And so up until I actually make a dime on what I'm doing for referral bonus social row, you know, frankly, I just think it's kind of a hobby, you know? I mean, I'm more passionate about that, not to have any potential investors watching this think I'm not serious about it. If they saw how hard I work, trust me, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to change the world. But I don't want to consider myself being an entrepreneur until I actually make money at yeah. it, you know? We've actually made a couple placements with referral bonus being half automated. Um, and half manual, you know, so it, it works, people like the idea. But I want to make a dime, I want to make a dollar at it, I want to be the guy who puts that first check or whatever, you know, on the wall and I frame it. Yeah, perfect. You know, I want to do that. So. Yeah, that's a great philosophy. I notice here, I notice here in Kendall and in Boston versus 495, which has become a little bit more laid back, there's more of a buzz, and I'm seeing a lot of younger people, you know, both men and women in their early 20s, right. not having to, they don't want to crawl that court, you know, through the corporate mud for 10 years and then go and do something. I'm seeing folks jumping into it earlier. Are uh, you seeing that as well? Yeah, I mean, right now it's like a gold rush. You know, everybody and their brother wants to be an entrepreneur. They say, I'm an entrepreneur. There's lots of people out there that go to different events. We have different events every night and they haven't graduated college yet. They don't have an idea, but they say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> it's like, really? You know, what's your idea? Oh, I don't have one yet. I'm looking, it's like, you know, like shut up, you know. I mean, why don't you go home and do some work and get a freaking idea, and then and then work on it. You well, know? It's, there's, there's it, way too many events right now, and people become part of the technorati. You know, they show up at this event that they become popular. But until you launch something, I mean, honestly, get your butt home, sit at the desk, and work on it. Launch a freaking product. Yeah, I, I hear a lot of people, you know, talking about it. Right. And until you've you have mortgaged your house, 
yeah. which, which some of us have to do our yeah. ventures. Yeah, yeah it, it's a big thing, and maybe maybe the, the stakes have changed, but maybe she's yeah. actually launching something. Yeah, exactly. You know, instead of talking about it. Exactly. So I, that, I launched Solstroy. It was not hard to do. I backburnered it. You know, and I'm on a referral bonus. We're going to launch it from Hell or High Water. Okay, so what so. do you think people are talking about and not doing it? Is it just is it just bravado? I, is it because younger people? Are I doing don't know. It? I kind of wonder if some of them have money from their parents and they just want to be cool and hang out. And it's a gold rush. They want to meet the right people. Maybe some idea comes along. I mean, I'm kind of harsh. I want an idea to succeed. I, if I'm going to invest an idea, if I become an angel investor someday, I want to have a really great team. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want to have a killer global changing idea. Like Jordan Fliegel at Coach Up, he's got a great idea. He's got an idea of like basically let's put up a site where parents can find personal coaches, you know, for their kids. Or anybody who wants a personal coach without having to go join a club or whatever, you know, it's also expensive for personal coaches. How do they market themselves? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They know how to market themselves, they just know how to coach. So it's bringing everybody together. So I think Coach Up is a great idea. I believe in the startup. I'm actually an advisor to Coach Up. And ideas like that, he's got a great team, he's a great leader, you know. So those are the people that I like. Some of the younger people that I see that just talk about like, oh, I'm gonna have a blog. You know, oh, this is a blog about events in Boston. I'm like, really? That's 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 a joke. Yeah, it's, it's a nice to have, makes you popular, but you know what? That's not a world changing startup. Yeah, so it's a joke. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great concept, and obviously, actions speak louder than words. Right. So, Marsh, you're a believer in givers' game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And being a connector. Yes. How does that play? Obviously, in your business, it's good, but I'm starting to see more of that. How's it play into your business? Because you don't necessarily look for much in return. But you get a lot in return from that, don't you? Um, I do. So, in a way, it's like I probably have the biggest favor bank in Boston. I'm always helping people out, you know? But really, it comes down to if you help other people out, it'll come back to you in return. I mean, at least with my recruiting business, I've had people coming to me now for help. I am trying to put myself out of business with a referral bonus. But it's nice how people come to me for help for their other recruiting because I've helped them in the past. They get to know me, they hear, you know, positive comments, like I heard like Seth Prebatch at uh, Scavenger said, oh, Marsh, he's a cool guy. I've actually never met Seth in person, but apparently my reputation is getting around from helping people. And, you know, connecting people, you know, helps grow the community. If I can be a, you know, a central hub to help people connect, then I'm happy to do that. Beautiful. Now, am I going to owe you a favor for dragging out here to Voltage? No. Uh, there. I'm off the hook. You okay, saw that. So, one final question. Looking, you've been at this for a while. Looking forward, what do you see coming up? What's, what's the crystal ball? Your show. Um, the crystal balls we put recruiting agencies and job boards out of business. You know, straight up. We want to do that. We want to help grow the economy. We're in a gold rush right now. We want to go worldwide with a referral bonus. Um, and eventually, you know, hopefully we'll IPO with that. Um, that's my passion right now. And eventually I'd like to be an angel investor, you know, or a VC someday. Like Jeff Buskang said that in his book, Master in the VC Game, that his, his biggest thing that he does for his portfolio companies is recruit for them. And I sent him an email saying, you know what, I'll be really good at that because I already have a big fat candidate database from all the recruiting I've done. So yeah, I want to help grow the Boston startup economy and fix the world. Excellent. Well, we need more folks like you. I want to cool. say thank you very all much. Right. Thanks, Rob. And I want to thank the folks at Voltage and take care. All right, cool. Thanks.